All right, let's do it. Let's create. This is polymer clay tips and tricks. This is for beginners. I am going to share my experience with using the Super Sculpey original um, clay for the first time. I have sculpted in ceramic clay before, but never have I sculpted in polymer clay. And I'm going to tell you my experience so that you learn from my mistakes or that you just get um, bypass all the issues with it and just look for the solutions that work. So um, I use just a single box and you're going to be very disappointed when you take out this clay and you see how uncooperative it is. It's like hard and uh, it doesn't really work, especially if if the weather is cold, it's going to be uh, hard to work with. You need to recondition it. So that means knead it and no one likes to knead. That's not fun. But if you break it up in small little pieces, um, just get a little circle between your palms, warm it up, you know, go round, 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 make a little ball. It softens it up greatly. And then you can add it to your project and work with your project. Uh, and it's awesome. Another option that I mentioned was the pasta machine. Uh, again, I got this one on Amazon. It's awesome. You just kind of roll it a little bit and shape it into like a snake or depending the shape that you need and put it through your pasta machine and look how soft it comes out. I run it through the machine like twice and um, it just really um, speeds up the process as far as kneading um, and reconditioning the polymer clay. So this little machine is definitely worth it. If you're going to be working with polymer clay, I, I um, advise that you get one of these. Um, it'll save you tons of work and make the process even more enjoyable. Um, as far as what to put your on your surface, I like working on a file folder, just a cardboard or card stock, or that's what I like to work with. Or you can work on a parchment paper and just set it down and then you can transfer that cardboard to a uh, um, baking sheet when you're ready to cook it in the oven. You can actually put your cardboard on the cookie sheet, work on it, and just leave it there, not even have to move it. You know, it depends on the size of your project that you're doing. Sometimes um, you really don't want to mess with moving it a lot. Um, if it's something that you, has an armature or or you have some type of a, a, a mold. And it's very important to get the thickness right because in the baking process, that's what causes it to crack when your thickness is too uneven or too thin in places, um, it will crack. So just make sure that it's, you know, at least a quarter inch um, thick and you will be just um, fine. Usually how you work this clay is you have an option of painting it before or you have an option of painting it after you bake it in the oven. And you will would use, well, there's a variety. You can research a variety of safe paint that you could use. I use just acrylic paint. And I've used, I've painted before and after, and really I don't see a great difference in it. Um, as far as protecting it, I use the water-based polycrylic um, in clear. And it just, you know, after you bake it in the oven, that's what you use for the final coating to protect it if you wanted to do that. But it, it really depends where your project is going to be, if it's going to be outside or if it's going to be handled a lot then I would protect it with that. If not, the acrylic paint is pretty um, durable. So it's your choice. There are a lot of options that you could use. And basically, um, when you bake it in the oven, it should be baked for 15 minutes per every quarter inch. Now, I have baked thick pieces that are more than a quarter inch, maybe like an inch, and I have baked thin ones together because I wanted to see the result if they would char, you know, burn or not bake well enough. But my process is that I preheat the oven to 275 and then I stick my project in there. I do put a, 
um, paper on the cookie sheet, I put a cardboard cardstock or I put a file folder under. I never put it just bare on the baking sheet. And um, I do tint it. I cover it with foil. I make a tent out of foil, um, being careful, you know, that it sits on top and not directly on the project. And uh, that's it. It's not completely covered. It's just tented over and the sides are open. And when it's the oven is preheated, I just stick it in there and um, turn on the timer for one hour. And... Um, I just bake it at that temperature for one hour. When the timer goes off, I turn the oven off and I just let it sit in there for a little while. And then um, I pull it out maybe like 15, 20 minutes after that. Um, I go ahead and pull it out of the oven and just resist the temptation of picking up your objects or, or messing with them until they cool because they will come out very hot. And here you're you're seeing this um, uh, face uh, garden face man that I made, and he I just love the way he turned out. For being my first time, I really enjoyed uh, sculpting, and the ease of it is remarkable. It just opened up so many possibilities for me, and ever since I sculpted this one, I have already used probably like fifteen blocks of polymer clay for different. Um, uh, objects that I've made and it's just the sky is the limit whatever your imagination can come up with um, whatever inspiration you can gather you can make and um, the beauty of this is if you don't like it to wad up your your um, clay and make something else here you're seeing the raw side of the super sculpey and this was the skin color sculpey not the white one and it's just very durable. It's just like thick plastic and it's just awesome because it's waterproof. And again, it is gonna be something that's gonna last a good while and it's versatile because you can put it inside, you can put it outside. And um, just so enjoyable to work with. Here, here um, in on this project, I went ahead and painted the surface before I put it in the oven. And I used acrylic paints and I didn't use the polyacrylic. Remember that one has to be used at the end when you're no longer going to bake it because you don't want any toxins flying in the air or stuff like that, you know, when you stick it in the oven. So I always make sure that your paint is safe for the oven if you're going to paint it before putting it in the oven. And just basically that's it. If you wanted support, for example, this, this one here was thick enough where it didn't cave in, but you can have situations if your item is domed and too heavy from the top, they can go ahead and cave in when you're baking them. So what you can do is you can go ahead and leave a, a wadded foil paper inside, like a, a mold, the foil paper, um, just so that it has some support while it's baking and once it's baked, it will be just fine. Um, it Again, it depends on the thickness of your project. And that's where you're going to want to take that precaution. So um, another tip, let me see. Oh, I wanted to mention that polymer clay, the difference between uh, ceramic clay and polymer clay, again, not only is that you don't need a kiln, you bake it in the oven, but also uh, ceramic clay, it you have to cover it up or work fast or you know re-wet it so that you can work with it because it does dry out a lot especially if you're in a place with um, a fan or you know a place that is uh, dry it will go ahead and dry out on you as far as polymer clay goes super easy because it will not dry out the air doesn't dry it the oven is what bakes it. So you can leave a project there uncovered and work with it as you have time and it does not dry out, which is so awesome. I mean, you do want to protect your clay from not getting dirty, maybe dusty 
or, or, you know, debris, hair, or whatever flies around in your environment, you can cover it with a little plastic or something like that so that um, your um, stash that you're working with doesn't get dirty or your project. But basically, that's the ease of working with this theme that you have so much flexibility. Here you're seeing the actual purpose of this sculpture that I made. It was for my garden. I have a, a garden uh, channel on YouTube and um, it is um, just a joy to work with. So I hope these tips and tricks helped you and I hope you get inspired and go out there and create something. All right, everyone. I will talk to you later.